Welcome again. This is uh, Mwalim Jeff Bama. Uh, today we're going to look at the map of Kenya and uh, the elements of the map also uh, using the Kenyan map as an example. To begin with, we shall start by looking at a map, what a map is. We have to get the understanding of the definition of a map. That a map is a drawing that represents the earth or part of it on the flat surface or on a flat surface. That a, a drawing that represents the earth or part of it on a flat surface. That is what a map is. So we have key elements that each map should have. And these key elements include the following. One, we have what we call title. That each map must have a title. Secondly, we have a frame. Then we have the key, which is also called legend. In addition, we have scale. We also have compass. These are the five key elements of a map that I would like us to look at each and understand what they mean. The title, when you talk about the title of a map, uh, the name, this is the name given to a map. The name that is given to a map, it is usually written at the top or on the bottom of the map. Uh, what about the frame? It is the border that is drawn around the map or around a map. We also have key, which we also call legend. This key or legend uh, contains the symbols and signs that have been used on a map. It shows what the signs and symbols represent in a map. So we have the scale, and the scale shows the relationship between the distance on the map and the real or actual distance on the ground. So that is the function of the scale, that it shows the relationship between the distance on the map and the actual or real distance on the ground. Compass shows the direction of a place on a map. A good map should have the five key elements. It is so crucial that a good map must have the five key elements. Uh, as we continue, we ought to understand that uh, these maps that we talk about have got the importance. They are so essential. And that's why we have to look at the importance of maps. Uh, one importance of a map is locating the directions and position of places. Secondly, maps are, are used in identifying direction and position of places. Thirdly, identifying our neighbors. We can use maps to identify our neighbors, for example, other countries that neighbor Kenya. Locating various physical features on the ground guiding tourists to their destinations. That is the work of a map, to guide tourists to their destinations. As we go by, we also uh, need to understand, we should also understand that uh, map, map, map work has got what we call interpretation. And this interpretation is what will help you to understand the map very well. This refers to giving meaning to the features and symbols used in the map. We use the key elements of a map to read and interpret maps. And symbols and signs help us to identify the different features uh, on a map. For example, the presence of a quarry in a map or on a map shows that mining is taking place in that area or on the map. Market, when there's a market, it symbolizes that trading activities uh, are taking place in the area. The game reserve also shows the presence of wild animals. Whenever we see a sawmill, it shows that timber is processed in the area. Whenever we see scrubland, 
It shows that the area is dry. Location and position of Kenya. Remember, Kenya has got neighboring countries, and each country uh, borders Kenya to a given direction. Uh, to begin with, Tanzania is to the south of Kenya, as we understand. Uganda is also to the west of Kenya. In addition, Somalia is to the east of Kenya, South Sudan to the northwest of Kenya, and the Indian Ocean to the southeast of Kenya. We have ways in which Kenya maintains good relationships with her neighbors. We have various ways that Kenya has to maintain a good relationship with our neighbors. And this, uh, to begin with, we have trade that Kenya imports and exports goods from her neighbors, for example, bananas from Uganda, among other importations and exports that are done in Kenya. Trade also maintains a good relationship uh, between Kenya with Kenya and other countries. We also have games and sports activities. We understand that Kenya participates in games such as football with her neighbors, and that maintains the great relationship with those neighbors or neighboring countries. Ambassadors, Kenya as an ambassador in each of our neighboring countries, and these ambassadors represent Kenya in those countries. The ambassadors, as they represent Kenya in those countries, they also symbolize some peace or proper coordination with Kenya and those countries or uh, proper relationship. We have free movement of people from Kenya to her neighbors and vice versa. That is, people move from Kenya to our neighbors freely and from those neighboring countries to Kenya freely. And that enables peace and good relationship among those countries. The use of common language uh, for example, the use of Kiswahili language with uh, other uh, countries, for example, Kenya with Tanzania, the use of Kiswahili has enabled these countries to maintain good relationship. Even in trade, they use the same language, and that promotes trade as well as relationships between the two countries and others that use the same language. Uh, we also need to understand that Kenya has got its size. We have the size of Kenya. And this size of Kenya, uh, it, uh, Kenya, we understand that it covers the area of a, about 582,646 kilometers square. 582,646 kilometers square. That is uh, the area that Kenya covers in kilometer squares. Uh, and then it is about 850 kilometers from east to west and about 1,025 kilometers from north to south. So we have to understand that Kenya is wide from the north to south and narrow to the, from east to west. Uh, when we compare the kilometers that we are given here. So it is so crucial that we understand uh, the kilometers that Kenya covers across. As we go by, we also need to understand that we have main fiscal features in Kenya. The main fiscal features in Kenya, uh, we also ought to understand before we look at these main fiscal features, it is good that we also need to understand what fiscal features are. We should note that fiscal features are natural things found on the Earth's surface. They are natural things found on the Earth's surface. The fiscal features are divided into two main categories, and they include uh, relief features as well as drainage features. So we start by looking at relief features. Relief features are fiscal features that are seen above the surface of the earth. And they include the following. 
one, we have mountains, we have hills, we have plains, we have valleys, we also have plateaus. These are what we call relief features, that they are physical features that are seen above the surface of the earth. Drainage features, drainage features are physical features that are associated with water. They are physical features that are associated with water. Uh, they include swamps, rivers, lakes, oceans, and dams. So all these uh, drainage features are associated with water. As you can see the examples of swamps, rivers, lakes, oceans, dams, among others. They are associated with water and they are found on the Earth's surface. Thank you for your time. Remember to subscribe, like, and comment. Thank you. May God bless you.